morning and welcome to this week. Uh, Michael is here with us. Yo, Michael, how are you? Good, how are you? I am great, uh, just great on this rainy, cloudy uh, Friday morning in New York City, but I'm glad to be alive and safe and uh, sheltering or chilling in place. Sometimes I call it stewing in place. Hey, Scott, how are you? No, well, how are you? Hey, man, like I just said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm alive and kicking this side of the earth. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we lost five comrades, you know, over the last couple of weeks. So um, a moment of silence uh, to our dearly departed. It's a big loss uh, for us. Um, yeah. Well, good morning, Revolution. And uh, Scott, what in the Sam hell is the matter with your president? He's calling you, on people to shoot up. saying my president. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I mean, I didn't vote for him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, there was, a, there was a study that came out um, that looked in, in closer to real world conditions about how to um, kill, how to destroy this, um, the virus on different surfaces. And what right. came out was that um, bleach is effective, it takes a little while, rubbing alcohol is more effective and quicker, and sunlight, it turns out, is really effective, UV rate, the UV component of sunlight in particular. Um, so Trump somehow got it into his Twitter feed and his mouth and his brain that um, we need to, uh, that scientists are working on uh, ways to get UV light inside of people's lungs and also ways of getting disinfectant into people. He said like, inject, inject, inject the disinfectant. disinfectant. So public service announcement, he, do not inject any disinfectant into your body, you will die. Um, oh my God. Michael, the boy is tripping. If it wasn't enough already that he was coming down hard on immigrants and their spouses this week with the lack of a stimulus check, this just breaks the record. I mean, this is ridiculous. We're at the point now where we have a president that shoots his mouth off about anything, is capable of doing anything, as if the Muslim ban wasn't enough, you know, the children in cages, where else can we go? And so that's why we really have to emphasize why by, you know, by, I don't want to say by any means but why a united left center front must defeat Trump in November. It's the only way. You know, I used to think that the boy was crazy like a fox. You know, people say, oh, he's stupid, he's dumb, he's ridiculous, he's an idiot. I'm beginning to think that they're right. I mean, Lord have, have mercy. Uh, Scott, um, what is it gonna take to defeat this cat, man, I mean, you know, I just wrote an article on uh, on the Big L. You know, Lenin, not Le, Le, whatever that dude's name, Lebowski. <laughs> what, what was that, Lebowski? Lebowski. <laughs> and I I said at the end of it that I think there's going to be a, an an electoral uprising in November if we have an election. God knows what what might happen by then. But what is it going to take to defeat him? Uh, well, I think. Mean electoral uprising is right. And the way I would put it is, you know, we have to take the political tools at our disposal. And the most immediate of those is the vote that was won for working class people and people of color and women by, by decades and centuries of struggle. Um, mm. And that is the first tool that we can use in this fight. Um, so any, anything that sort of dismisses elections as, as a minor uh, form of struggle is, you know, I, I think is is kind of blind to to that history. You know, it's the it's the first weapon at our disposal against um, the the rising fascist threat. But Michael, you got the electoral college, so you know you can win the popular vote. Mrs. Clinton won the popular vote. Some people say it wouldn't have mattered, but I think they're wrong about that. But okay. Um, thing, you know, th I think we also have to understand that this is not you know, a, a, a contest of personalities. It's not mm -hmm. Trump and whoever, you know, the Democratic nominee is. It's not, you know, Nancy Pelosi and Lindsey Graham. 
what it is is the elections bring the issues that working people can unite around such as health care education women's reproductive rights climate change and they go to the polls with that in mind because there's more to lose than just a personality in the White House. This is, mm. we're avoiding setbacks, you know, in the longer struggle for democracy, progress, socialism, et cetera. So we have to keep that in mind when we go. But wait a minute now, you can't say it doesn't matter who's in the, I mean, you know, uh, Trump, man, you know, they say the boy was reading Mein Kampf. He had it on his bedside table. Now, I don't begrudge anybody's uh, reading material, you know, <laughs> but the but the policies, the policies that they're enacting, you know, no immigration. You sent me a tweet the other day, Michael. I'm shutting down immigration in these United States by executive. Did, did he do that, Scott? Uh, he um, limited all new, any new uh, demand for entry into the United States. Um, however, people can still apply for green cards. I then I read that if you are married to an immigrant, you can't get the $1,200 check. Yeah. What is up with that? I saw a nurse a in LA. Program. It's a neo-fascist program. That's what it is. You know, um, and, and then, you know, they're talking about Ku Kluxers and neo-Nazis being what did he call them, Scott? Um, decent um, people, decent people fine, on both fine, sides. Very good people on both sides, fine people on both sides. Um, and just oh rallied goodness. in Michigan last week. They just had a rally in Michigan last week. It was, uh, you know, and we wrote a statement condemning it. But that's what we're up against. We're up Not just in Michigan. Capitalists. We're up against the extreme right. They've been having them in state, state after state after state. I was just reading one uh, about Pennsylvania. Your home state, Scott. Uh, I'm, in New York state now. I'm, I'm, huh? I'm a refugee from, from Pennsylvania. I, I live over the border in New York state now. Uh -huh. Oh, come on now. You're a Pennsylvania boy, and you know <laughs> it. I'm an Ohio guy. You know, I'm proud of him. I'm a Buckeye. You're from the Keystone State. Huh? Politically, my hometown is Chicago. That's where well, I Well, that's a good place to be, the hometown of the great Harold Washington. Yes, sir. Claude Lightfoot, you know, it's a good, it's uh, a good absolutely. Richard Wright spent a lot of time uh, in Chicago. Haymarket. Yeah, yes, uh, the, yeah. the original home of the, the, the place the party was founded, right? Right, 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 right. Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. Uh, my kind of town. So again, coming back to this issue, Scott, what's it going to take to decisively defeat the right. I want to know. I want to dwell on that notion of decisively uh, for a second, because it's, it's a category that Lenin, or a concept that Lenin introduces um, in, this, in the 1905 democratic revolution in Russia. And he says, look, there are different ways of defeating the czarist autocracy. You know, you can do it in a, a, in a revolutionary way that, that's a decisive defeat where you eliminate every vestige of serfdom and you eliminate the possibility of the you know a section of the bourgeoisie to compromise with reaction um and then there's the way and that's the that's the working class way and then there's the the bourgeois way of doing it which is you know the way of like the least possible changes the slow reform the you know compromise between reaction and and moderate forces um, and i think that's an important concept for us right now. Like what is necessary is not just a defeat of Trump, though that, that's part of it. It's a defeat of the extreme right, which has been cultivating the the ideology that Trump is pushing and, and raising up people like Trump for quite a while now. Um, so we need a, a, a mass um, electoral and other movement strong enough to take those priorities in a sense off the table. So I would see a decisive defeat of the far right as like, you know, it's no longer a question of whether women have the right to autonomy over their own body. It's no longer a question of whether we listen to science about climate change. It's no longer a question of, um, you know, whether 
disenfranchising huge sections of the population is constitutional. Taking those things off the table as, as possibilities is, is, I think, a, a part of this. And that takes, you know, a massive electoral uprising, but also movements to, to um, end disenfranchisement and voter suppression and all sorts of other things. But oh, wait a minute now, we're in the middle of a pandemic and the economy is collapsing. Uh, or maybe that's a little bit, but it has the potential to collapse. And unemployment is growing rapidly. Small businesses are being wiped out. And um, many jobs, and most people are employed, I think, by small businesses around the country. Massive unemployment. So, you know, a dude, Michael, asked me the other day, yesterday, he said, if the Communist Party, you know, if y'all had a, a big stake in the Congress or majority, what would you do? Tomorrow, what program would you put on the table for addressing the crisis? I thought it was a good question, you know? An excellent question. So um, what, what will we do, guys? I mean, what would, what, Michael? I think we could start with the people's bailout, bailing out people, you know, what they owe, freezing rent, you know, helping the people before we bail out these big businesses and airlines, you know, these million dollars. All right, let's, let's take that issue of freezing rent. But what if you don't have any money to pay your rent, Scott? Now, I heard that you were opposed to the universal basic income. So I want to ask you if maybe I heard you wrong, but if you are, then what do you do? Michael says freeze the rent, and I agree with that. But a lot of people, look, they ain't got no money. They got $1,200. You know, uh, that's like, part of one month's rent in New York City. Yeah, so the, I think there should be, um, first of all, in the immediate context of the crisis, um, not just a freeze on, well, I guess a freeze on rent in the sense of um, that there is no rent that will ever be collected for the duration of this crisis um, from people. Um, moratorium. Know, yeah, a moratorium on, on the collection of rent, and that includes a moratorium on uh, mortgages. It would have uh, on mortgage payments. It would have to. Mm -hmm. because, you know, there are people who who are landlords, and you know, yes, landlords make money uh, by owning and not by by working. But um, if you want to make this a reality, uh, you know, moratorium on mortgage payments as well. Um, so the landlords can't use the excuse, "Oh, but I have a mortgage payment to make. You know, I need the rent." Uh, um, okay. And then in the longer uh, perspective, we would have to look at things like um, a, a right to housing. And um, for example, in Cuba- uh, You are evading my question. I want to know if people don't have no money, how are they going to pay the rent? By not having rent. So- yeah. are they got, opposed to the Okay, well, how, how will they, let's say they don't have to pay no rent, all right, moratorium. Right? How are they going to pay the electricity? How are they going to eat? So, How are they going to go to the gas station and buy gas? Are you asking me about the twelve hundred dollars uh, stimulus check? No, I'm I'm saying that if people job. are unemployed and don't have any money and are starving, what should we do? Yes, we should we should absolutely um, expand and extend unemployment even more than has been done. We should give people not just one round of this stimulus check, but but several. Um, uh, for the duration uh, of the crisis. So you are in favor of a universal basic income. No, case. no, because a universal basic income is the premise is that you give people like on an ongoing basis, regardless of what's happening in capitalism, a, um, a monthly payment. And that sounds great, but it, what it is in effect, it's a policy dreamed up by libertarians um, to gut the to gut social programs. Even Yang, who brought it forth, um, said that um, people currently receiving benefits would uh, choose between the $1,000 a month and their current benefits package. Uh, but that was before the crisis. And doesn't the demand for relief have to adjust itself to the crisis? And isn't it the case that the concept of austerity 
of neoliberal cutbacks, even before the crisis, was by most in the West, even in broader public opinion, poo-pooed, say that don't work no more. We got to try something different. That's very true. And, 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 but I think UBI is one of the things that, that the, the capitalists came up with to try and avoid the real solution, which is not giving people um, money, but ensuring that people have the services that they need for a living. Make sure that people have food, make sure they have uh, a place to live, make sure they have medical care and education. Instead of giving people a check, eliminate the number of things that they depend on money for. Um, I said give them a check while they can't work, because people cannot work now. Sending them back to work is, might be a death sentence. Give everybody a check now, Michael. And then let's do one more thing. Let's cancel debt. All debt, student debt, personal debt, a debt jubilee. Absolutely. You know? That's the only way out of this crisis. You know, Bernie and the progressives in Congress, they propose $2,000 a month mm. until the crisis is over, plus, you know, for giving debt, at least $35,000. I that's know that's what, what I'm talking about. about. And it should be, it should be, it should be all, um, or almost all debt, including student <laughs> loans, credit cards, um, uh, mortgages on first residences in many cases. Um, and, and it could be termed, in fact, uh, a sort of repayment of all of the uh, wealth and opportunities that the working class has lost um, through tax cuts to the rich over the past 40 years. You know, during the days of the early days of the Russian Revolution, Lenin asked the question, can we advance if we fear to advance towards socialism? And then the answer, was no, and today the answer is no. Um, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. I don't care what nobody says, uh, period, end of story. So we got education coming up this weekend, Scott. Yeah, we got a, a national school. Uh, I'm not sure how many people have registered. Uh, quite a few, I think. Over 300, like 340 wow. people, man, yeah. So I've been uh, inviting people to their school left and right. <laughs> they, they uh, just, uh, I'm going to be, uh, be leading the class on or the session on um, the limitations of capitalist democracy. Um, but I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, uh, the presentations of the other comrades and, and hearing from the participants. It should be really interesting. We might have about 400 people, but at least who sign up by the time that's like mass public education, you know, for us. You know, that's like a big, when I was at Kent State University back in the day, if you had 100, 200 people in a class, that was considered. But now, you know, this kind of goes with the territory. People are hungry for knowledge and uh, we have to uh, provide it. So we're going to have the class this coming Saturday, the Marxist classes. Y'all sign up, go to cpusa.org on the front page, sign up. And then it's going to be next Saturday. Uh, for two weeks consecutively. And then May Day is coming up and we got a challenge. Yeah, Scott? so um, I, you know, I don't have my mask here, uh, but so we have a, a, a May Day challenge, which is, you know, make um, a COVID, you know, face mask to show your solidarity with uh, workers on the front lines, with unemployed people, with undocumented uh, workers, um, you know, whatever uh, design is, you know, meaningful to you in terms of solidarity, make the mask, put it on, take a picture and send it in. Uh, if you don't want, you know, your identity uh, published on our Facebook or whatever, we get it. You can wear sunglasses and, and a mask. Uh, you don't have to use what, your real name, whatever. What if you can't make a mask? Make a, it, uh -huh. You can make a sign, um, a sign. perform a little bit of music, um, you know, send us a, a short clip, uh, music, poetry, uh, make um, some sort of visual art piece and take a picture and send it. We want, basically, normally we go out into the streets to show our solidarity. We march together and we chant and, and all that. Uh, this year we can't do it, but we can still 
show our solidarity and our belief in the working class and in the socialist future. So send your submissions to discussion at cpusa.org. Uh, we really want to get them. Deadline is April 28th. Michael, are you making a mask? I think I'm going to try to do one, although uh, one of our comrades who was giving me advice on it yesterday, he said, prepare yourself because it took me six hours. So, But if I don't do a mask, I'll do a song or a dance, I promise. Okay. Okay. I'm going to wear one because it'll be an improvement over this one. <laughs> uh, so, comrades, uh, I think that that just about does it. Uh, we need to organize to defeat the right. We need to defeat them decisively is going to be on the basis of this crisis will define the election campaign, I think, and responding to it and putting people before profits in the course of putting, you know, I mean, that has to be the basis for moving forward. I have one and, more question if, if we have time for it. Go ahead. What do you guys think is the, the relationship between the, the 2008 crisis and this one? Is this um, another in a series of crises? Is this another sort of spasm of that same crisis that started in 2008 for the working class? What, what's, the, what's the relationship between them sort of historically, politically? Michael? You, you know, know, I was thinking about that the other day. Hmm. And I was considering how the 2008 crisis, as a crisis, and then the reaction to it, the working class kind of progressive reaction to that, you know, that was the appetizer. And I think now we're hitting a full, you know, the, the main course mm. in terms of we are facing a pandemic, one that we have not, we have not faced anything of the type uh, since 1918 with the Spanish flu. And then on top of that, we're nearing, nearing, not that quite there yet, something like the 1929 stock market crash. We're getting mm. there. If it stays like this, that's what it's going to be. So both of those at the same time, you combine those together, that's an all out capitalist crisis globally. Right. So it shows us that this movement is broken, um, not the movement, but the, the, the system is broken and the movement responding to it, at least here in the United States, it's uniting around the issues which we're going to go and vote on in November. And so kind of we were mentioned the Russian Revolution. Who were the people who participated in the Russian Revolution? Well, it wasn't just communists. It wasn't just leftists. It was people maybe who considered themselves conservative, orthodox Christians, peasants, you know, people in the middle, you know, center, liberals, whatever. All of these people are going to turn out. They're going to have to turn out in November to be able to, um, you know, change this government, which is failing time and time again. It's yeah. a cyclical crisis, Scott. Michael's right. It happens every five years or every 10 years. You know, the different things that go into it. Um, sometimes it's a crisis of overproduction. Sometimes it's a crisis of overproduction uh, mixed with an attempt to, like it was in 2000, 2008, rip off Black and Latino and senior citizens by uh, selling them loans that they knew that they couldn't pay back and then betting against them and bringing the whole world down around them. These are some vicious sons of bitches. And, and nobody went to jail. Nobody. They just made billions, trillions. Yeah, they even oh. got their, uh, their massive executive compensation there. Their Don't get me started. That's why we need a revolution, y'all. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's a uh, good morning revolution, good evening revolution. Okay. Uh, we need more and more democracy for the workers and people. Um, that's it for us. We'll see you on Saturday at the Marxist uh, School. And, uh, and then we'll be back next week, same time, same station, same place on Facebook and YouTube. Later, Conrad. Uh,